Kisumu National Museum is located in Milimani Estate in Kisumu, Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, you see the glow? It's because I am in Kisumu and I want to give you a tour of the Kisumu Museum. So let's get right to it, okay? Kisumu is a Kenyan port city on Lake Victoria. It is the third largest city after Nairobi and Mombasa and also the cleanest city in Kenya. The Kisumu National Museum features two exhibition galleries and one education hall. Let's hear about Kisumu Run organized to celebrate the city and its runners in order to encourage sport and spread joy and good humor. 24th of? This of September. September yeah. Yes, yes. And it's gonna, we, we, you're running from where to where? From, no, it's sports ground to Imbanda Museum. Yes. Even, from the airport. Uh -huh. Which categories are there? Five categories. Ah. Three, three categories. Sorry. Awesome. Where are the categories? Oh yes, I can see five kilometers, ten, ten kilometers, 21. and twenty-one yeah. kilometers. Even people with disabilities. Or even yeah. people with disabilities as yeah. well. Yeah. Adults are paying two one, and kids are paying one thousand five hundred shillings. Yeah. And once you pay that, you get a t-shirt, right? T-shirt, and then after before that day, the teachers yes they give you the kit for running. Uh huh. Shoes. Yes. And they are this twenty one hundred. Uh huh. We cater for your like snacks, yes. soda, yes. biscuits. Nice. And the winners, do the, do winners get get kind of a prize? Yeah. From number one to number ten. Do you know what they're getting? I know from number one to number three. I can see uh, cash prizes for top ten. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Kisumu, my pride. Here are the crocodiles of uh, Kisumu Museum. By the way, there were no guides on this particular day. The guides who come by do it as a part-time job to earn a few coins there are no guides employed by the museum and i wasn't lucky to get a guide on this particular day so i did the tour by myself all the crocodiles are caged as you can see and they are fed meat three times a week i was told And now to this amazing collection of tortoises, yo! I must have taken like five minutes just staring at them. From the very young, tiny, juvenile ones to the older ones, you see them intermingling, disturbing each other, quite peaceful. <laughs> I loved it. Now check out this snake park at the Kisumu Museum that has both venomous and non-venomous snakes. Onto the fish aquarium, which displays fish found inside freshwater lakes, mainly Lake Victoria. Yo, fish lovers, are you ready? <laughs> Most of these fish are common amongst the communities around western side of Kenya, mainly the Luas. Yeah. 
You see, this museum was actually opened in the year 1980. The museum stores and disseminates information on cultural and scientific issues with emphasis on Western Kenya, specifically the communities that live around Lake Victoria. So this cultural gallery focuses on the Luos, the Luyers, and the Kalenjins. When it comes to their economic activities, you know, fishing, farming, food harvesting, name it. Enjoy!
On to my favorite part. This was the climax on, of my tour at the Kisumu Museum. We are talking about the Luo traditional homestead. <laughs> Bergidalai is actually UNESCO sponsored. Traditionally, most Luo homesteads were polygamous, meaning one husband and several wives. And the Luo homestead in uh, local Luo language, my language by the way, is called Dala. Typical traditional Luo homesteads would always have these kitchen gardens with Luo vegetables. We're talking a pot, we're talking bo, we're talking uh, suga, name it. A typical Luo homestead or Dala was made of a compound where the owner and his extended family lived. The huts and other buildings within the homestead were built on the basis of long cherished traditions and customs. This is an example of a typical Luo homestead and for this one it is Dala Jaduong Odero which basically means the home of Ze Odero. The houses had a circular shape because a circle among the Luo represented a center of being a center of openness and transparency which in turn led to respect unity and peace the first sun's hut would look something like this the fireplace there is to drive away all manner of insects and also to keep the place warm the first wife's heart was situated directly facing the main gate the second wife's heart was built to the right of the first wife's heart the third wife's heart would be built to the left of the first wife's heart and vice versa. The same tradition was followed by the sons. Yo, this one here is the house of the owner of the homestead. Because the male head of the homestead built a separate hut for himself. Yes, known as duo, constructed between the first wife's heart and the cattle pen or if you like cool odreru is the house of the third wife yes in this case it's the third wife in some homesteads it will be the fifth wife reru just means the last wife and this wife was pampered so that she doesn't get to leave <laughs> Is it only me or second wives or let's say middle wives are always kind of ignored? Ah, uh, I don't long to be anyone's second. Uh-uh. Eh, worst of all in the middle. Mm. <laughs> this here is the cattle pen or if you like cool where the cattle were kept. And also now the small round one is abila. Abila is where the sheep and goats were kept or rather the small animals within the luo homestead you get to be entertained by this luo traditional dance group let's get to the entertainment but first of all we have to say hi to the owner of the home zeodero and his council and seek their permission <laughs>
This picture here is used to summarize the process that was used when establishing a new home, which was basically when one of the sons moved to start a new life in his own homestead. The son would live in company of his father and the uncle or close members of the family who are men, okay? The homestead owner, who is the father, would carry eggs to be used to chase away bad omen. As you can see, they have carried flames to light the way because they would leave at wee hours of the morning. They would work together with the uncles and carry a number of tools for clearing bushes and for defense. And on the way, the son would be given various pieces of advice on matters life. <laughs> the son would carry a cock or chicken, a shun, and an axe, symbolic of a new beginning. Wow. In the journey, if they encountered bad men, say a snake or a hornbill or an owl, they would stop the journey and return back to the homestead to avoid bad luck. Damn. They would then plan to start the journey on a different day. Till the course is clear. Imagine. Now, when they finally reach their destination, they will invite other relatives to set up their homestead as they hold celebrations. Yes. <laughs> and once done, guess what? The eggs, you remember the eggs that were carried? They will be placed on the thatch roof just in front of the house to chase away bad or men. Yes. And guess what? Fun fact. The son who is the owner of this new homestead is the only one allowed to make the door to the house. Mm -mm. Look at those uh, old men having fun. Yeah, it's time to party. And the women cooking over there, all fun and celebrations. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Kumbeluo started this fun thing from way, way, way back. <laughs> And here was a sight to behold, y'all, watching the weaver birds, you know, weave their nests. Ah, amazing. Ah, see you on the next one.